our president, Brigadier Morris Atherton, has decided that it's time to retire as our president. He succeeded the Countess of Guildford in 1993. Since then, he and his wife Wendy have taken a keen interest in all that the society does and have supported the executive in a number of ways, including hosting a very enjoyable lunch and drink at their lovely home. <coughs> but Morris will be difficult to replace. They understand his reasons for wanting to retire. And I'm sure they'll both continue to support us from the back benches, as it were. So, as a sign of our appreciation, we have a little gift for you. If you'd like to accept this on behalf of society, in thanks for all that you've done for the society over the years. Well, now, first of all, ladies and gentlemen, I should like to thank, on your behalf, um, Derek Lynch, our uh, most excellent chairman, and the executive committee, for all their very hard work during the past year. And he mentioned that, in fact, he's not completed 11 years, and he's beaten Jack by one year. <laughs> and I, I have no need to remind you uh, that the Dover Society is a force for good unlike what is going on around the world at the present moment. It is widely respected throughout the area and always ensuring that the society is kept in the public eye. And then, as you also know, the society runs a series of lectures during the winter months with visits during the summer. So our warmest thanks go to Beverly Hall and Patricia Hooper, so the chair. Now, I don't intend to um, make any sort of speech tonight. But it does remind me that Winston Churchill used to say that there were only two things more difficult um, about making an after-dinner speech. One was climbing a wall that is leaning towards you, and the other is kissing or trying to kiss a girl who's leaning away from you. <laughs> Uh, basically already now, I'm giving up the presidency of the society this evening. I can hardly believe it's 22 years since Peter Johnson, as the then chairman of the society, wrote and invited me to be president. Well, I felt very honoured and accepted with alacrity, since Wendy and I, although we're not Devorians nor even men of Kent, had lived in the castle for five and a half years, from 1976 to 1981, and had grown very fond of Dover, and we had made many friends. The highlight, of course, was the installation of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother, as Lord Warden of the St. Paul's and Constable of the Dover Castle in 1979. That is when she was aged 79 as well, so it was made under 10. And her appointment brought us into even greater contact with many people and organizations in the area. From the chairman of councils and their offices, mayors, Dover Harbour Law, Dover College, and indeed with many other societies in the Dover area. But I was also invited to become a Rotarian, which gave me much pleasure whilst we were here. And during all this time, we made many good friends. Harold Morrison was the first mayor of Dover that we knew, and how well he and Sylvie looked after us and made us feel so welcome and part of the community, as did people like Ray Warner. So I hope that you don't feel that I'm getting down by giving up the presidency, but I'm now well over 88, which is probably quite a good time to go. <laughs> Whilst I'm still more or less still in command of my faculties, I haven't yet lost my marbles. <laughs> But if we may, with, as we will stay as members of the society, and I hope we'll come to a lot of these meetings and continue much as we've done before. But we have great admiration for the Dover Society. And I thank you very much indeed for looking after us so well in the past 22 years. <laughs>